reasonably warm November afternoon in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The temperature is in the 60s as the Eagles host the Cincinnati Bengals, a crowd of 70,000 expected at Veterans Stadium. Hello, everyone. I'm Dick Enberg, and welcome back to National Football League action. And fortunately, today we'll not be talking about Jack Donlin and Ed Garvey. The principals will be Ron Jaworski and Wilbert Montgomery. For Philadelphia, 89, Henry, 37, Campfield. And we're underway. Henry at the goal line. 15, 20, 30, and out to the 33. So the crowd applauds. A fine return by little Wally Henry. He was tackled by Tom Dinkle. The Eagles take the field first. Ron Jaworski is the quarterback. Running backs, the outstanding Wilbert Montgomery, number 31, and 35, Perry Harrington. The receivers, leading active receiver in the game. Carmichael with Ron Smith, former Charger, former Ram. Tight end, Spagnola. Walters, Kenny, Morris, Baker, and Sizemore, the blockers up front. First down from the Eagle 33. Long count by Jaworski. Play action. Smith unable to handle it at the 45-yard line. Kenny Edwards, Wilson Whitley, and Ross Brown are the defensive line. A little technical difficulty with Merlin's microphone. We'll work on that. Bo Harris, Jim LeClaire, Glenn Cameron, and Reggie Williams are the linebackers. Breeden and Riley at the corners. Kemp and Hicks, who did such an outstanding job at safety last year for the vastly improved Bengals in the deep spots defensively. Second and ten. Jaworski knocked down by 75. The nose tackle Wilson Whitley. And there's the first unanimous boo of the return <laughs> season. Well, I was out at the Eagle practice yesterday and Sid Gilman was talking to Jaworski he said make sure you complete that first pass he said that'll be the, for the fans well Ronnie missed the first one and now he's missed the second one he's going to try and make that third one good you can better believe that Jaworski in the first two games of this season this wounded year was the number one quarterback in the National Football League there are his career totals he's the top passer Ken Anderson number two this year and out of the shotgun for the first time third and ten complete and then drop Ron Smith had the ball and a first down could not hang on Ken Riley the veteran at the corner the rattler from Florida A&M made the defensive play both uh, both these coaches approached this game in the same way both felt that uh, if they just approached it as if there had been no break that that would be the best way to handle it they both have put in complicated offensive and defensive plans for this game they may have to back off a little bit if that becomes a problem that's Mike Fuller all time San Diego Charger return artist punt return artist he's inside his 30 for Cincinnati. Richard Blackmore now watch this they're going to be Blackmore is going to be driven right into the receiver there knocked the ball out of his hand but the ball has touched the receiver Mike Fuller trying to get to the football but he's just a step late Griggs pounces on the football and the Eagles get the first big break of the day at the 30 yard line of the Bengals the rookie Griggs who played at Villanova they gave up football transferred for a senior year to Ohio State and the Buckeyes still celebrating that win over Michigan yesterday Montgomery fumbles and Richie Williams has it for Cincinnati crowd delighted one moment and on the very next play Montgomery coughs it up Dartmouth veteran Williams has it it appeared that one of the linebackers actually got a pretty sh good shot on him. There it is, right there. So, Bengals have the ball when we return. Cincinnati, Bengals start from their 23. First possession, Anderson the quarterback. 
Keith Johnson, the fullback. Across the 25 to the 26, a gain of three, second and seven. Here's the lineup for Cincinnati. Anderson, player of the year last season in the National Football League with two big backs, Alexander and Johnson, behind him. The receivers, a great core. Collinsworth, the brilliant rookie of last year. Isaac Curtis, the talented veteran. And the tight end, often forgotten but outstanding Dan Ross. Munoz, the all-pro. Lapham, Bush, Montoya, and Wilson, the components in that offensive line. Second down, seven. Griffin comes way out as a wing right. Up the middle, Alexander, and he has a first down at the 34-yard line. The initial first down of the return season goes to Alexander of LSU. Forrest Gregg watching the work of his offense out there. Defensively, Dennis Bigfoot Harrison, Ken Clark, the nose guard, Carl Hairston, the front three, the linebacking core bunting. There's the big change. 56, Jerry Robinson, the pro bowler, has moved inside to join LeMaster with Wilkes now, the outside man. Young and Edwards are at the corners. Shara at safety along with Randy Logan, the veteran. First down play. Pete Johnson takes quite a wallop from Dennis Harrison. One of the few men on the field that outweighs Pete Johnson, who's around 260 pounds. Marion Campbell, defensive coordinator for the Eagles, talking about the, the move that uh, took Robinson inside. They simply felt that he could get in on more plays inside. He is a, an all-pro outside linebacker, an unusual to move all, an all-pro. But they felt that teams were able to maneuver away from his talents. They feel that being inside will allow him to make plays on both sides, both left and right, and they, that he can get in on more of the action. I want to ask you a question about that after this play. Second and nine, Anderson. Broken up by Edwards as Collinsworth was the intended receiver. But in moving Robinson inside, and he has great speed, 4'6", he weighs only 218 pounds. Will he be able to handle all that heavy traffic in there? Well, that's something we're going to find out about. Uh, certainly easier in the kind of flexible defenses that we're playing now that I don't think he could go inside on a 4-3, for example. But in a 3-4 setup with his strength, he's a very strong 218-pounder. And I think he can handle those blocks inside. Third down and nine. Al Chesley is very unhappy. He's the man who's been replaced as Robinson moved inside. And Reggie Wilkes took the outside position. Triple right. Good protection. And a fine catch. Steve Kreider has a first down or close to it at the 45-yard line. Let's see where they mark the ball. He may not have made it. It's going to be close. It's going to be very, very close. Probably call for a measurement. Anderson Sharp on that. Anderson cut his finger. The uh, At McAnally, who led the National Football League in punting last year. Fairly short. Good bounce. And down to about the 21-yard line. So the Eagles have the ball for the third time in this fourth quarter day as Berlin and I will be calling the Cleveland Browns and Dallas Cowboys here on NBC. Eagles no score start from the 21 yard line. John Spagnola and the pitch to Montgomery. Turns the corner and ducks out of bounds at the 23 yard line a gain of two. Cameron made the play defensively. Los Angeles Rams well hello. Off to a jump, 7 nothing against their arch rivals, the Atlanta Falcons. Of course, there is no NFC West this year. It's all NFC and AFC. It'll be interesting. Of course, the Rams, one of those teams that was off 0-2, and, and uh, certainly those first two games have become much more important in a shortened format. Nine-game season now, and most of the coaches feel it'll take five wins to make the playoffs, and that's the goal, at least five. These two teams are 1-1 one and one starting today. Jaworski to Ron Smith. He's to the 35-yard line, and the Eagles own their first first down. 12 yards on the pickup. One of the concerns of the Cincinnati Bengals' defense is the fact that they have not been getting good pressure on the quarterback. And it's very apparent on that play as Jaworski has all day to stand back there and throw that football. Gets it in front of number 13, Ken Rattler-Riley. And, of course, they get the, the big first down. But that's something they're going to have to do. They're going to have to get pressure on a quarterback or they're not going to play the kind of defense they need to play to win. 
The Bengals having uh, six sacks in the first two games, but not an interception. First down from the 35. It's Perry Harrington trapped in the backfield. Gets loose and picks up a couple. So he turned a five-yard deficit into a two-yard gain before Brian Hicks could make the tackle from his safety position. If you want to get outside, you've got to be able to close those big defensive ends in. Watch number 73, Edwards, being worked on by Jerry Sizemore. Sizemore doing a good job. He's number 76. Took Edwards to the ground. And now you see him break the corner on the outside. Picks up nicely, although they got good pursuit from Hicks from the inside to shut the play off. And credit Harold Carmichael, the big wide receiver, for a pickup block to help Mr. Harrington out of that jam. It's second down and eight from the 37. Jaworski dumps it. Incomplete and just as well to Harrington had he caught the ball Glenn Cameron was right on him it would have been a loss as it turns out incomplete they'll return to the 37 third down and eight these starting linebackers uh, for the Bengals have been together for about five years now and that kind of teamwork is very very important but uh, LeClaire Cameron Williams and uh, all those guys have just really had a chance to to enjoy working together over a period of time they know each other inside out Jaworski one four five 12 yards the one completion to Ron Smith he needs eight for a first down out of the shotgun and here comes the Bengal defense oh, the almost. Oh, now they're backing off still the equivalent of an eight man line down the middle Carmichael incomplete deflected and then almost intercepted by 26 Bobby Kemp. One of the things you don't want to do as a defensive back is bat the football or as an offensive receiver bat that football into the air. Now watch Carmichael is going down. He's the main intended target. Defender batted it up in the air. Carmichael turns back with those long arms had a chance at the football but it was very nearly intercepted too. Bobby Kemp the man that almost came up with the interception. So Runniger will punt for the second time in this initial quarter. Ten minutes remaining in the first period. Mike Fuller, who had some problems receiving the first kick, is back at the Bengal 22. Fuller, 23, 25, 30. Looking for a block. There is none. Returns it out across the 35-yard line. And protest here in Philadelphia of sorts. Or on this beautiful day, maybe they're out just fishing. Anderson has a man open. It's Dan Ross, and the tight end scrambles across the 45. He's near a first down. Herman Edwards made the tackle. Dan Ross does not get the kind of public acclaim that is given to Kellen Winslow, a few of the other tight ends around the league. But in my view, one of the complete tight ends in football, an excellent blocker, and simply unafraid when he comes across the middle. He took a real shot from Jerry Robinson earlier, kept right on going across there, and I watch him fight for that yardage. Boy, he's a he's a tough customer. Good, good football player. Let's see how Anderson uses this free down. He's just going to play it safe, get the first down as Pete Johnson takes the ball into Eagle territory to the 48-yard line. The Saints had the early lead against the Chiefs in the first quarter. We talked about conditioning coming back. One man who's traditionally had weight problems is Pete Johnson. And I asked some of the players, I said, Al, how about Pete? What was his weight? And they were laughing. I was talking to Munoz and Montoya. They, Munoz said, I think he's going to back up Montoya at guard. <laughs> he said about 265. But amazing the kind of quickness and strength that he he's he is one specimen as a man, I'll tell you. Didn't seem to lose any of his speed on that first carry. Fake to Alexander and Anderson to the 45 to the 42 yard line. In the grasp of John Bunting, number 95. Anderson, who led all quarterbacks running the football in the NFL last year when he gained 320 yards. And he's not a youngster, 33 years of age, but still has good quickness. One of the things that makes him such a positive quarterback is the fact that he'll make a decision like that without having to stop and worry about it. He'll pull that ball down and take off. He's an excellent runner. And he's learned how to protect himself. You saw him make the slide there. He hasn't been injured too many times of late because of his running. Six yards on that scramble, so it's second and four at the Eagle 42. Collinsworth. 
left wide open at the 21 yard line. First down, Cincinnati. Pass to Collinsworth, the outstanding young receiver in front of Herman Edwards, number 46. Time to throw here for Anderson. Eagles not mounting the kind of rush they would like to be getting on him. Pass thrown low as you should throw that ball in front of the defender. Collinsworth comes up with the big catch. Delightful young man from University of Florida. His nickname is Cadillac. He likes to enjoy life. A pro bowler last year, certainly enjoyed first year in the NFL. He caught 67 and has a first down now at the 21. Pete Johnson just inside the 20 yard line. John Bunting and company stacked up the play for the Eagles. Talked earlier about the change that the Eagles had made in their defensive backfield. John Shara, of course, coming off the injured reserve list, injured his knee first game of the season, and of course, figured to miss a good many games. Actually, only missed one. Activated because of uh, a foot problem. Bernard Wilson, uh, ordinarily starting in the safety position, Shara's back there, and so far, been doing a very fine job. Only Johnson behind Anderson, double right, and Johnson up the to the three-yard line. Herman Edwards, a quick pop, and Johnson shot through untouched. That's the kind of play that gives defensive coordinators nightmares. Ken Clark, number 71, moving inside. Robinson trying to desperately cover the ground inside. But big Pete Johnson just ripped his way up through the middle, got very close to that goal line before they finally pulled him down. The two cornerbacks, Roy L. Young and Herman Edwards, had to scissor in to stop the touchdown. It's first and goal inside the four-yard line. Alexander and Johnson split behind Anderson. Johnson gets a couple. Ken Clark, the middle guard, replacing uh, Charlie Johnson, who starred for the Eagles at that position for the last few years. Clark made the stop along with Leonard Mitchell, 99, the second-year man from Houston. One of the concerns that I'm sure Dick Vermeil and Marion Campbell would have in talking about that move of Robinson inside is that the reactions for a middle linebacker or for an inside linebacker are different than those for an outside linebacker. And in the heat of the battle, you do what you've been trained to do over the long haul. And this, of course, Robinson's first shot at that game action middle linebacker. Double tight end and both of them wide open. And Ross just coughed it up as he hit the ground. And he is furious with himself. They give back an easy touchdown. And the Eagles have dodged a bullet. Third and about two. Let's see if they can keep the Bengals out of the end zone. Well, that call certainly caught the Eagle defense off guard. Holman bookends on the right. Ross on the left. ML Harris, a third tight end, is winged out to the left. coverage from Robinson who was right on top of ML Harris man to man on Harris now watch him at the last second the hand goes up he's looking at the receiver all the way and cannot touch him until that ball arrives that's fine defensive work so the Bengals will settle for a three point try as little Jim Breach number 10 comes in for Forrest Gregg Breach four four seven in the first two games of the year. Steve Kreider to hold. A 20-yard try. This is nothing more than an extra point. And Cincinnati has scored first. Breach kicks it off. Henry and Camfield waiting at the other end. This is Henry at the 7. The 20. And he's out to the 25-yard line. 
A reminder, fans, after our Thanksgiving special, the Cowboys and the Browns on Thursday. Next Saturday, NBC Sports World puts you in the holiday spirit with the beauty and the grace of world professional figure skating. Former Olympic greats such as Dorothy Hamill, Janet Lynn, Robin Cousins, the Proto Popoffs, they'll be featured. It's an encore performance from the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, an event you won't want to miss if you enjoy skating at all. Some brilliant performances next Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern Time on NBC Sports World. I saw the lineup for that. Just what a what an outstanding array of international talent. It's like the Hall of Fame. Oh my. <laughs> First down, Eagles trailing 3-0. Ball at the 25. Montgomery. Ooh. Just tripped up and secure. They say he went down from the force of a defensive player, so they mark it back at about the 28-yard line. Jim LeClaire, 55, had a piece of him. Trying to work that right hand corner of their offense. Bo Harris, number 53, tried to come upfield and make the stop. Gets far enough out to just get a piece of Wilbert Montgomery's foot. Montgomery trying to gain his balance and crawling, but once he's been knocked to the ground, once it, if he is hit by a defender and his knee hits the ground, ball is down. If he falls on his own, he can kick, uh, get up, keep going, of course. That's the rule in the NFL. Cincinnati dominating play, but leading only 3 0 in the first quarter. Second down, seven. Harry Harrington to the 32-yard line to bring up third and three. Cameron made the tackle. Harrington from Jackson State. He followed the great Walter Payton at that school. Has 83 yards rushing in the first two games of the year. Chance again to watch Bo Harris, number 53. They expected to play outside. They cut it back inside, making pretty good yardage on that play, bringing up a third and short. He goes probing the right side in there behind Kinney, the offensive guard, and number 76, Sizemore. Big right tackle. Third down and three. Jaworski out of the shotgun. Complete Campfield and a first down at the 39 yard line. One of the receiving specialists that Dick Vermeil uses in third and pass, and he comes up with a catch and a first down, seven yard play. Ron Jaworski says he is the most dependable receiver on this team and an absolute genius at finding the open turf and then just absolutely steady. He, you get him that football, he'll catch it, and right there he found the necessary yardage for the first down. He had very fine play. Merlin, he had 36 catches last year, just in situation, a situation player. He uh, was on the same Kansas team. Nolan Cromwell was his quarterback for the Jayhawks. Cromwell, the old pro safety with the Rams. Carmichael, another first down at the Bengal 48. Many observers in watching the Eagles jump off to such a fine start this year, leading the NFL in offense. 14-yard pickup for Mark Carmichael on that play. Attribute that to the return of Sid Gelman, the offensive genius uh, who was absent from Philadelphia for a year, and many people felt uh, that the uh, that reflected in uh, less imagination for this Eagle offense during the '81 season. Well, he's back. The Eagles are cooking. Jaworski is uh, back on track after a subpar year. Carmichael's 528th career catch gives the Eagles a first down, first time in Cincinnati territory. Here's Harrington. And he burrows to about the 44-yard line. Wilson Whitley, the nose tackle from Houston, made the stop. Looking over the shoulder, shoulder of Steve Kreider. Bujnak inside now. A quick look at Wilson Whitley, number 75. Big nose tackle. Does a good job of getting off the block of the center. Guy Morris and right into the action. It's about a three-yard pickup. He's second seven. I'm sure that Forrest Gregg was very disappointed that they ended up with three instead of seven on that uh, last drive. He would love to be sitting there with a seven-point lead at this point. Uh, you won't see Ross drop that ball the next 99 times. Harrington on a swing, 45-40, and he is close to the first down at the Bengal 37 and a half. It will depend on where they mark it. Bobby Kemp of Cal State Fullerton, the safety man, made the tackle. One of the things you'll see the Eagles do is move their personnel around a great deal to try and take advantage of their special skills. They are not as talented a football team as the Bengals in terms of physical skills. They do not have the number of quality athletes. And the seven 
seconds and it's Montgomery inside the 35. Jim LeClaire of North Dakota 55 in on the tackle. Counting down to the end of this first quarter. We saw some mistakes in this first quarter but we've also seen some pretty good football Nick. A, a little balance of both. Out wide left is Smith. <laughs> Lots of hugging for mom during the layoff during the strike. Jaworski buried by Eddie Edwards, the defensive end from Miami of Florida. So there's the first sack of the afternoon. Edwards in right on top of him. One of the concerns that the Eagles had going into this game was that the Bengal defense is a very complicated defense. They throw everything but the kitchen sink at you. And you'd like to have an extra couple of days to get ready for them. Very short week. And that is how the practices this week. Whoa, I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> Your kind of coach. Jaworski, third down and 12 at the 39 yard line of Cincinnati as we start this second quarter. Going deep down the middle to Campfield. First down at the 15 yard line. Talking to Vermeil. About Jaworski and Jaworski's season, he said he was off to the best start ever. He felt that he was the hottest quarterback in the NFL. And you see the reading ability of Jaworski and Camfield getting to that open area. Jaworski putting a little loft on that ball, dropping it into the open turf. What a fine play. We talked about Camfield and the fact that Jaworski loves to go to him in this situation. You see here exactly the reason for that. Great concentration on the ball. Big, big first down. At the 15-yard line, trailing 3-0, the Eagles threaten early second quarter. Carmichael in motion. Flag down. Complete to Montgomery. And he gets about five yards. And we'll check, unusually, to not only be playing, but be a star in this National Football League. First and 15. Bootleg did not pull uh -oh. Potter. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> And it was close enough to Spagnola, no penalty flag. Uh, that, that might be one of the most interesting passes you'll see all season as Jaworski gave it a two-hand hook over his left shoulder and was able to get it in the direction of Spagnola. Now, it's questioned here in my mind as to whether he was in the grasp of Browner. Browner would appear to have control of him there, but Jaworski shakes him off. Now, watch him spin around. He's going to flip that ball over his shoulder right here. <laughs> and look at this. He almost completes it. Spagnola comes back, gets his fingers on the ball. Would that have been a spectacular reception? <laughs> that would have gone into the highlight film or the low light film. <laughs> One or the other. Second down and 15. Let's see what Jaworski has in his bag of tricks on this down. Give it to someone else, and Harrington takes it from 79 Ross Browner. It was Browner that had Jaworski in his grasp on the previous play, and he was angry that he, one, did not get a sack, and two, he did not get the penalty. Perfect construction by the defense as Browner was stunning inside and knocked that off. Detroit, 14 over Chicago. Off to a quick lead for Detroit. 2-0 when the uh, season stopped. Looks like they want to get back on track again. And New Orleans leads Kansas City 10-7 in the second quarter. Here, Cincinnati 3, Philadelphia nothing early in the second quarter on a beautiful, this is almost a summer-like afternoon in the middle of November in Philadelphia. Almost like winding back the clock to earlier in the fall, isn't it? Beautiful day. Too much time. And that will cost the Eagles five more. For first down, must put the ball inside the five of Cincinnati. Actually, the 27-yard line. Ooh. Almost intercepted by Lewis Breeden, number 34. He's the man that tied the NFL record 102 yards with a pass interception at San Diego last year. You saw on NBC. Almost picked that one off. I think the Eagles were just trying to pick up a few of those yards because it's going to be a relatively long attempt for Tony Franklin. I think they wanted to get him a little closer for the attempted field goal. 
It'll be about 44 yards. Franklin is perfect in this uh, abbreviated season. He's hit on all three tries, 44, 44, and 47 yards. And this one will be 44. their 27 yard line Anderson three for six passing thus far plenty of time he hits Ross and the tight end is to the 43 yard line a pickup of 15 first down Cincinnati at its 43 from Philadelphia let's go to New York across their own 43 yard line Johnson the only setback and Anderson to throw again for the bomb. Collinsworth intercepted. Herman Edwards. Collinsworth makes the tackle at the five yard line. That one serves as a fairly dandy punt. And Collinsworth is just standing there looking at the official as if to say, wait a minute, didn't I get interfered with on that play? There was some bumping going on, but it was a clean interception for Herman Edwards as he broke inside. What a great play. Odyssey is the keyboard in that final game of the 49ers from the five Jaworski to Harrington and Perry Harrington nothing there as Leclerc makes the tackle going back to the interception by Herman Edwards his second of the year that in essence served as a 51 yard punt for Cincinnati if you want to look at it that way it certainly did Dick and uh, probably would have been difficult to get the ball out of bounds or down to, as close to that end line I'm sure they weren't unhappy they would rather have had Collinsworth catch it however and control the football inside the five themselves short gain uh, graciously give uh, Harrington a yard second and nine the Steelers an unbeaten team the first two leading Houston by a field goal early Wolbert Montgomery Flank way out to the right, and Carmichael is in motion. From the end zone, that's going to be a safety, I believe. Let's see where the ball is. Safety. Two more for Cincinnati. Reggie Williams, number 57 from Dartmouth. What a year he had last year. Four interceptions, two fumble recoveries, three force fumbles, 11 sacks, and he gets a sack and two points on that play. Fuller at his 25, 30, and he is hammered at the 33 by number 98, Gregory Brown. Greg Brown, an interesting story, Dick, uh, was picked up, uh, tried to play at several colleges, simply was not a able to do so because he couldn't get eligible was a construction worker and uh, picked right off the construction job and given a tryout here and has turned out to be a pretty good football player and he worked out uh, during the summer with those Georgetown players there's the Cincinnati Bengal offensive line they've got to be the biggest offensive line in football we'll look at those numbers a little bit later again but the size is awesome averaging six five and nearly 270 per man Anderson throwing that one away. Archie Griffin was well covered by Randy Logan. And again, Anderson with that quick judgment didn't try to force it. He had thrown that one away from the start. Well, part of the passing game is protection. Watch Munoz getting to the outside. He sees a man breaking for his quarterback, and they just about tore him in half, not allowing him to get to Kenny Anderson. One of the reasons that Kenny Anderson was the player of the year, was the passing champion last year, is because of that kind of protection. And look at the size, 6'6", 278, 6'4", 262. The small guy, Blair Bush, 6'3", 252. Wow. Second and 10. Pete Johnson hit by 71, Ken Clark. And then followed up Hairston and Wilkes. And Johnson didn't like the little extra hit he took. I mentioned off the top that this would be an emotional game. These players have been on the shelf for quite a while. And you see it there. They don't, uh, <laughs> nobody likes that little extra shuffle, though. They, it's a little, something a little embarrassing in that for, for an offensive back. Ball is shy of the 35 yard line. Third down and still 10 for Cincinnati. That's Kreider setting himself wide right. 
Ooh, I think we had a movement there. Oh, we did. Anderson breaking away, and he's going to run it. 40, 45 out of bounds with a first down as Anderson able to scramble again. A flag is down, I believe. Dennis Harrison, 68 was offside for Philadelphia. We'll see if he was drawn off. I think maybe there was a move. In fact, looked like the left guard uh, moved, Dick. He... Yes, yes, he did. Of course, you can't you can't move from that down position. Uh, there it is. It's Munoz right there. Actually, had two guys lifting their hands prior to the snap of the ball. Munoz and Lapham both. Dave Lapham, 62, Munoz, 78. That cost the Bengals 14 yards on Anderson's run. And of course, that's something Illegal that you would expect to see today. Offense. Because down. your some of your reactions are still a little dull. And it, it'll take a while to get back in gear that way. Anthony Munoz. What a brilliant pick. The first round choice of the Bengals two years ago. He was a punter in high school. He averaged 40 yards a kick. I imagine he probably <laughs> put he probably ruined a few Broke footballs. a lot of footballs, I'll bet. <laughs> 267 pounds. He looks thin at that thing. On third and 15, down the middle, Collinsworth incomplete, and he was surrounded by Eagles. Anderson throwing the ball into a crowd. Collinsworth actually being bumped, but you'll see here the application of the rule the defensive players allowed to uh, to bump a man if they're not doing it intentionally and if they're doing so and going after the football now maybe a question there as to whether he was indeed going after the football in fact uh, if we could allow the officials to look at that particular play I think they'd throw a flag but he made it look good as he made his move into the player as he was turning as if looking to the ball and incomplete so Pat McAnally his Harvard team beat the Yales in their Annual rivalry yesterday under a 10 man rush gets it away. Wally Henry at the 30. And down at the 33. The Robert Jackson from Central Michigan made the tackle, number 37. And the man who certainly orchestrated the activities from the Union side. Who did win, if anyone? We know the fans lost, and that's how they feel in Philly. Perry Harrington to the 35 to the 41 yard line goes Harrington a gain of about nine who do you think won the strike did anyone well nobody wins but if you if you would take uh, the positions that the owners wanted things to end up in and the position the players wanted them to end up but let's say the players position would be uh, one and the owners ten I think they ended up about seven and a half or eight I think the owners certainly got more of what they wanted than the players did. Do you think the players, the rank and file, will ratify the agreement on Tuesday? I think there'll be a lot of negative votes, Dick, but I don't think there'll be enough to take them out again. I think they will ratify it. Montgomery. Ooh. First down as he's knocked out of bounds at the 46-yard line by Brian Hicks from McNeese State. Montgomery getting some good running there, but also a fine block from number 63, Ron Baker. Watch Montgomery going to the outside. Little quick pitch out from Jaworski. And I think we're going to see the block right there. That. Oh, that's Spagnola. There you behind him. You saw the block on Eddie Edwards, number uh, 73. Spagnola getting a good block as well. Not, not a great deal of yardage on that play, but that's some good hard hitting football. Pittsburgh, the Steelers trying to make it three wins in a row. 10 0 against Houston in the second period. Miami trails Buffalo. Both those clubs unbeaten. That's the only battle of undefeated teams today at Buffalo. Down the middle. Oh! Magnola incomplete at the 50 yard line. And Reggie Williams is right there. And a good pop also from Bobby Kemp on Spagnola. Jaworski paying the price for that one as he was decked after the pass was delivered. Spagnola bobbling that ball back and forth for a long while. He took a shot too. Some good hard hitting football out here today. Five to nothing. The Eagles trail Cincinnati with nine minutes left in the first half. Worst by the strike. We're the rebuilding teams. Very, very difficult for them to get their momentum back. And how about Mike McCormick starting in a strike as the new coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Harrington. He beat everyone but the last man to stop him. Louis Breeden as Harrington all the way 
to the Cincinnati 43. Very often we assess the abilities of a running back talking about his running skills. But I, I believe that very often it's visual skills that allow for a cut like that, seeing the opening inside and then being quick enough to take advantage of it. And seeing the play there, you see how quickly he reacted to that man coming from the outside? Very, very fine running by Perry Harrington. An 11-yard gain in the first down at the Bengal 43. A touchdown would give the Eagles the lead. They trail by five on a field goal and a safety. Reverse. Reverse, yes. Montgomery. Oh. And that didn't fool the <laughs> Bengals a bit. Jim LaFleur, 55, made the tackle. Wilson Whitley came in. Jaworski ended up clipping him. And then Whitley gets up. Maybe we'll get a chance to see it here. Here comes Montgomery from the outside. They wanted to use that speed. Now watch number 75, Wilson Whitley. Jaworski clips him. Now keep, keep your eyes on this because, well, I guess we might not be able to see it. There, keep it going. He gets up and he steps right over Jaworski. Look at him. He's moving him, moving him out with his knees. He says, hey, kid, don't clip me. No penalty flag, but it was quite obviously that Whitley saw that in the reverse all the way. Green Bay with a 6-0 lead against the Vikings in the second quarter. Second down, call it 14. Jaworski. Not exceptionally uh, hot, although the number one passer in the NFL starting today, but it's been a long time on the bench. Spagnola and the Bengal defense obviously gave the Eagles that short pass, took away anything long, and it's down to the 41 yard line. It'll bring up third down. And we'll be looking forward to celebrating the Thanksgiving holiday with you here on NBC. Merlin and I will be down at Texas Stadium in Dallas as the Cowboys host the Cleveland Browns. That's 3.30 Eastern time for NFL 82, the home of the Super Bowl, NBC Sports. We hope you'll pull up a chair and share your Thanksgiving day with us. These two teams, of course, entertaining thoughts of perhaps being in that Super Bowl. Certainly both having made recent trips, they'd like to go back and come away with a win. Third down and a long seven. Blitz! And incomplete. Intended for Campfield. The reason the pass was high was that 79 Ross Browner and 57 Reggie Williams were pressuring Jaworski. And this is exactly the kind of thing that Jaworski and Sid Gilman were worried about. Look at the number of people shooting here. Now there's no way that the Bengals can cover all of Jaworski's receivers. They're counting on getting to Jaworski before he can pick an open man. And they were able to do it. In fact very often they'll leave a receiver uncovered. Now you say they can't do that, but they got away with it there. Bobby Kemp, the safety man, was the first man in on Jaworski. Fuller back at his 10. Runniger will kick from about midfield. Good kick. Will it get out of bounds? Oh, yeah. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Beautiful kick. What? Wow. He'd just go out and kick the football. Yeah, Runniger was absolutely perfect. Out of bounds on the one. And they gave it to one of the big backs, Pete Johnson, burrowing out to the four-yard line. There's another story for Cincinnati, and that is a very important property is not in uniform today. Jack Thompson, a backup quarterback who had been in a battle, had been the number two quarterback for the Bengals and uh, had not looked too good in the first couple of games. It looked like Turk Schoenert might be moving into that shot. Now there you see Schoner at number 15 right in the middle. Well Thompson didn't come back after the strike. Didn't talk to anyone. Did not report. In fact is rumored to be negotiating with several teams in the USFL. Second down seven from the four. Johnson again. And he's close to a first down as he crosses the 10. John Shara 21 giving away considerable poundage to make the tackle. You ask if Robinson could handle the pressure inside and obviously they're trying to find out too. The Bengals they're going right at him with this play. He's working there on on the inside and they ran right by him. Uh, Jerry not able to to get in position to make the stop. Down and an inch or two. And a 
it's Johnson again a first down and more as he's to the 16 yard line in case you're wondering as you saw Forrest Gregg should there be a quarterback disaster situation with the Bengals and Anderson and Schoenert could not play Steve Kreider has been working out as the number three quarterback Carl Hairston number 78 diving into the middle of that pile but Pete Johnson is just such a physical back and yet looking back Dick how can we forget uh, that crucial play one of the most crucial of that Super Bowl where the San Francisco 49er defense able to stop him several times on the goal line to keep the Bengals from scoring what would have been a very big touchdown for them in that game. It's Johnson again they're working him and he gets good yardage again out near the 25 yard line. Shara made the tackle Johnson who set a Big Ten record when he scored 58 touchdowns with the Buckeyes. In fact we have two players today who really were touchdown makers Johnson 58 in college with Ohio State a Big Ten record but Wilbert Montgomery set the NCAA record. He scored 76 touchdowns while well, at Abilene Christian to break Walter Payton's college mark by 10. So both those men know the way home. They know how to get in that end zone, don't they? Second down three. Charles Alexander. Damn. He's not so fortunate as Carl Hairston from Maryland Eastern Shores. He wears 78. So did another graduate of that school, Maryland Eastern Shores, Roger Brown. Big Roger. <laughs> Roger, that's so big anymore. No, he's, he's out in San Diego. Last time I saw him, he weighed about 220 pounds and hardly recognized him. This looks so totally different. He weighed 100 pounds more than that at one time, didn't he? <clears throat> well, and, and more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looked sensational. Yeah. Third down, no gain on that last play. Third and three. And Anderson to throw. Archie Griffin all along, 30, 40, 45, and out of bounds at the 45 yard line the two time Heisman winner another ex Buckeye Archie Griffin and a perfect little touch pass from Ken Anderson the Eagles putting the blitz on Anderson Anderson able to hold off long enough watch Harrison get in there he'll go high in the air to try and tip this pass he gets up but just goes over his fingertips and again that's in the blitz very often the defensive end required to pick up the backs flaring out of the backfield Nobody there. Griffin goes down the sideline for a big first down, takes them out of trouble, puts the Eagles back toward their own territory. 22 yards, that's the longest play of the game. Dan Ross able to pick that one off the new carpet here at Veterans Stadium. Close to another first down. It'll be shy by a half yard. Eagle defense coming in for some boos from the fans here. A very vocal crowd here. Uh, they they love their sports they know their sports and they want their teams to win and of course the Eagles have have given them a lot of winning football under Dick Vermeil. Yeah, the reputation of the Boo Birds in Philadelphia is quite renowned. They say they boo Santa Claus. <laughs> they boo the kids that don't find eggs on Easter <laughs> Day. <laughs> OK. Second down less than a yard. Indeed they are outstanding fans. They know of what they cheer or boo. Anderson has a man open Collinsworth first down at the 30 of Philadelphia and they're moaning again the formula for a good passing game is very simple you need someone like an Anderson to throw the football but you've got to give him time reverse Alexander has running room 30 25 and out of bounds at the 18 yard line and that fooled the Eagle defense there wasn't a green shirt on this side of the field trying to take advantage of the fact that some of those containment responsibilities might be ignored a bit on a day like today that's something that coaches have to stay after a defense about who has containment on this play who has containment on that play obviously the man who had it on that play <laughs> was not in sight when he should have been Alexander uh, really had not been playing up to the potential that the Bengals expected of him until late last season he started to really come on if he can 
get back to that form. He really adds a, an even greater dimension to this Bengal offense. I remember the big game he had in the playoffs against Buffalo. Big, big game. Great Johnson. speed. Oh. That's Pete Johnson with a first down. It appears, well, that was a first down play, and he's inside the 15 to the 14, where it'll be second down and seven, and the Bengals will use a timeout here. to be four seconds remaining in the first half here in Philadelphia. The Bengals moving the ball through the air and with Pete Johnson on the ground. Johnson with 56 yards to lead all runners. It's second down and seven for Anderson. Looking into the end zone and down he goes. Carl Hairston got him from behind. Clark was there as well and so was Dennis Harrison. Almost feel as if your comments have been heard in the huddle as the Eagle defense rises to the occasion. They have to try and Make another big play here. They'd love to get a turnover if they could. The Eagles putting their long yardage defense into the game to try and take advantage of some speed. You watch Anderson going to the ground there. Good rush by Carl Hairston and uh, Dennis Harrison. Now perhaps Anderson figured if you're going to be anything be too tall, my man could get it. He won't. Breach to try a 39 yard field goal. Make it 38 officially. Right down the middle, and the Bengals add three more, and now lead eight to nothing. To go for the three and successful to get the breach 38 yarder, and now he'll tee it up and kick it off to the Eagles. So we'll try to generate something. Get on the scoreboard before the intermission. They have 61 seconds left. Be interesting to see if Breach tries to kick this one low or kind of squib it a bit rather than going deep with it. Good yes. call. Through the wedge. Nice pickup by Henry at the 10. 20, 25, 30. And he is to the 40 yard line. Wally Henry, finally wrapped up by Tom Dinkle. He did two things well. The obvious was running the football, but to field the ball on that short hop like an outfielder and get off to the good start was part of the play by Henry. Look at this good pickup. Looks like a shortstop down there putting his body in front of that one but watch the good cut to the outside Oliver Davis number 21 the man who dove for him and missed Dinkle just gets a hold of him from the outside Henry getting everything he could out of that one all the way to the 41 yard line out of the shotgun Jaworski Mike Quick the rookie has it at the 49 of Cincinnati nearly a 10 yard gain before Bo Harris makes the tackle quick. The rookie from North Carolina from midfield. Carmichael incomplete as Lewis Breeden from North Carolina Central. Very nearly an interception. Mike Fuller was there as well. It'll be third and less than a yard. Jaworski trying to take advantage of Carmichael's height six foot seven six foot eight inch receiver but had that ball a little bit low and Breeden up there almost pulled it away for the interception. So Jaworski statistically with a lot of eights by his name eight for 18 for 88 yards in this first half. Not stellar numbers. Out of the shotgun. seconds left. Eight nothing Cincinnati. Whoa. Intercepted. Ray Griffin at the 50 and he's out of bounds at the Philadelphia 40 yard line. Griffin the younger brother of Archie has his first interception of the year and the Bluebirds return to Philadelphia. And of course one of the tragedies is that that will go as an interception on the record of Ron Jaworski. No way that it should be there. The fault in the hands of the receiver. Watch this right through his hands over his head. Wilbert Montgomery making an error there that is very costly as Archie as Ray Griffin gets upfield gets uh, the Bengals in position to possibly come up with some more points and that for the Cincinnati Bengals is their first to the 40 of Philadelphia. So time for the Bengals to add to their eight nothing lead. Anderson complete. Collinsworth at the 32 yard line clock running the Bengals have just one timeout left so Anderson trying to hurry his team to the line of scrimmage wants to get inside of the field goal range of the kicker 14 second one play to do it and then call a timeout. 
Collinsworth. Oh, his momentum took him out of bounds. He had plenty of run. No, he's out of bounds. They say he did not get both feet down. He had plenty of running room down the sidelines, but the pass a little behind him took him on momentum out of the field of play. Jim Breach coming in. This will be a very long kick for Breach. Almost 50 yards, Dick. It'll be a 48-yard attempt, in case you're wondering. Breach has a 50-yard kick earlier this year in September. His longest ever is 51, but he's not had an exceptionally good record outside the 40. Only 12 for 28, 43 percent. Actually, it's going to be a 49-yard attempt. Got plenty of leg. It is good. Jim Breach's third field goal of this first half gives the visiting Cincinnati Bengals an 11-0 lead. Steve Kreider, the holder, doing a beautiful job of getting that one down. Watch the expression. I don't think Breach thought that had enough leg to get there done very nicely Rodney Tate the rookie from Texas is also back but it comes to Verser at the three he has speed 30 and almost shot through is tripped up in the 38 yard line by Zach Valentine a former Pittsburgh Steeler number 54 Ken Anderson and the Bengal offense comes on the field he'll have Pete Johnson and Charles Alexander in the backfield with him as the running backs and Johnson's more rushing yardage, 56 than the entire Eagle team. First half, Collinsworth, Curtis, and Ross Ross, and Collinsworth had three catches apiece to lead the Bengals, and there is the Cincinnati offensive line. From the 37. Anderson comes out throwing. Incomplete to Dan Ross, well covered by Randy Logan and Reggie Wilkes. It's Wilkes, 51, from Georgia Tech, the linebacker. Reggie Wilkes, the man that moved in to take that outside linebacking position vacated by Robinson, doing a good job. There's the defensive line, Harrison, Clark, and, and Harrison. And they have not really been impressive in this first half. Bunning, Robinson, Lamaster, and Reggie Wilkes, the man you saw just making that play. Roynell Young, number 43, and Edwards, the safeties. Edwards, of course, making that fine interception early. Randy Logan and John Shar, the safeties. Second down. Pass situation, and Anderson will accommodate. Dan Ross to the 40, to the 45. There's a new wrinkle by the Bengals. Ross, actually a tight end, and retreating back into the backfield little uh, tight end screen in essence and he picks up pretty good yardage some of the purists will scream that's garbage football but uh, as long as it makes yardage and you can do it consistently there's nothing wrong with throwing a tight end screen of course the Bengals throwing a, a wide variety of offense at you and they're very sneaky about it doesn't look like they're doing that many things but they really throw some wrinkles at you veteran stadium a lot of no shows today expected sellout a lot of empty seats Third down, call it a long two. To Kreider, first down at the Philadelphia 48-yard line is Steve Kreider, one of that core of outstanding young receivers that Merlin alluded to in the first half. The Bengals so well-blessed at that reception position. That injured finger of Ken Anderson's uh, that he hurt while trying to carve a piece of foam. Obviously not bothering him much as he had that ball right on target. Put a little zip on it. I noticed that the quarterbacks threw a couple of shots early that, that didn't seem to have any zip or any velocity. But they both warmed up as this game has continued. It's like uh, fastball pitchers, you know, kind of finding their way in about that third or fourth inning, really finding the heater. Pete Johnson to the right side, 45-42. Big man carrying about 260 pounds, Dennis Harrison at 275. Bigfoot made the stop along with Jerry Robinson. Coaches will talk about the importance of the first series after the half as being a series that you kind of set the tempo for that second half. Of course, David Verser came right out with a big return, and the Bengals have stepped in and started to play solid offense. I'm sure that's very frustrating for Dick Vermeil. He needs to have his defense stiffen up here, force a turnover, or at least stop the Bengals. Second and five. From the 42, Anderson to throw. John Bunning gets him from behind. 
Bunting from North Carolina, the outside linebacker, shot through on a dog and was able to track down Anderson from the backside. The second Eagle sack today. Bunting coming from the outside. Pete Johnson assigned to block him, knocked him away, pushed him. Well, you'll see it here. Watch him coming from the right side of your screen. Johnson will step out, pick up the blitzer. He'll push him back beyond the quarterback. Anderson simply cannot find a receiver. Holds the ball too long. Bunning gets back into the play. Hard to criticize Pete Johnson. He held him out a long time. What you have to say there, Anderson just ate the football. Third down and 10, back at the 47 of Philadelphia. And the blitz on again. Anderson, down he goes at the 46, and a flag is down. I think we're probably going to have a, a holding call. If so, undoubtedly the Eagles would decline and force the punting situation. It is against Cincinnati. And Hairston says, we don't want it. We want the football. Here's Jerry Markwright. Illegal use of the hands. Number 58. Offense. Decline. Blair Bush, the center. There he is on Ken Clark right there. He's got just a death grip on Ken Clark, number 71. That takes him past Ken Anderson. Anderson fighting to stay on his feet eventually is knocked down and of course they'd rather have the down than the penalty forcing McAnally into a punting situation. He kicked twice in the first half for a 37 and a half yard average. Wally Henry back at the 10. Dying spiral Henry at the 20 and able to recover his own fumble at the 22. Woo. Buff of the punt. At the Eagle 22, and trailing 11-0, it's Montgomery breaking a tackle. Beautiful cut, and a first down at the 34-yard line for Montgomery. Obviously, the Eagles feeling that they, too, must establish their running game. They go right to their best weapon. Dick Vermeil says this man is the finest athlete on his team. Best football player they have, Wilbert Montgomery. Hits into the back of Jerry Sizemore, 76. Keeps his balance. Uses, uses one of the defenders, Ross Browner, as a blocker. And gets himself a first down. What a player he has been. And he was the 154th player picked in that draft. Intercepted and then lost by Ken Riley, who is the all-time Cincinnati pass thief. With 52, almost had another. We talked about the great strength of this Bengal football team. One of the reasons that they have accumulated that kind of team is that they have had a very consistent drafting policy. They have 11 first round draft choices active on the team, six second round choices, three, no, 10 third round choices. Now you look at the difference in Philadelphia. They simply have not had the draft picks over the last few seasons. In fact, those, many of those draft picks went elsewhere in trades. Not a single player on this Bengal team arrived in their camp with, by a trade, Dick. Montgomery on a screen is in trouble. And Ken Riley came up to help out Jim LeClaire on the tackle. And a loss to the Eagles as the Cincinnati defense has seemingly been right on top of every gimmick play by Philadelphia today. Well, and one of the reasons is because of a very active core of linebackers. Number 55, Jim LeClaire, coming all the way across the field, reading that play, and that's what you have to do. You've got to have a lot of defensive bodies over there to shut off the avenues for a dangerous runner like Wilbert Montgomery. Third down and 13 for Philadelphia. They trail here early in the third quarter. 11 to nothing to Cincinnati. Three field goals and a safety for the Bengals. Shotgun, Jaworski. Far sidelines open and complete to Ron Smith. He's short of the first down. And of course, that's a, that's a tragic error. The receiver has got to know where that yard marker is. He certainly could have gone for it. Listen to the crowd. And they're going to go for it. Well, Dick Vermeil just hopes that if those fail, that the crowd will come in support of him when they talk about, <laughs> well, about think, retiring his number. I think if he misses it, they'll boo even louder. <laughs> That's true, after they cheered him to go for it. Such it is, they paid their price in. So they cheer the choice of going for it, down 11-0. And this is almost 
uncharacteristic of Vermeil. He has to try to generate something in his own end, 44-yard line. It's still early in the third quarter. They trail only 11-0. Jaworski, oh, it's going to be close. I don't think he got it. It all depends on how it's marked, but it did not look to me like he got it. He did take about a half step forward, and then the crush of the defensive charge. Now the Bengals led by Whitley in the middle, Edwards and Browner, with LeClaire and Cameron backing it up the linebackers. Of course, the Bengals saying they took the football away from Jaworski. They probably did, probably stripped it out, but they'll bring the sticks in and measure. No, they won't either. They just say he didn't get there. Listen to the crowd now. Chance for you to see for yourself. Let's look at that offensive surge. Jaworski ducking under. And it looks like he got good blocking in there by some of his offensive linemen, but enough penetration to keep him from picking up the first down. This season's number one total defense last year. He's not happy. They're dead last after two games this year. Anderson, little play action. Look at the running room. Now he's going to throw it wide open, but. Number one total defense last year. He's not happy. They're dead last after two games this year. Anderson, little play action. Look at the running room. Now he's going to throw it wide open, but Charles Alexander had the ball thrown behind him, and Anderson very nearly across. He is the across the line, and he gets a flag. He is across the line. It was so tempting, all that open space ahead, that Anderson flirted with the thought of running it, then saw Alexander out there all alone. There but you see the signal. Yeah. The illegal forward pass. He was beyond the line of scrimmage. Well, they marked it off. Let's run down all the scores for you. Still in the second here. It's 11 nothing Cincinnati. Now on second and 15. Johnson on a screen. 45. 40 39 yard line. Oh, he ran right through Reggie Wilkes. Shara there to make the tackle. Well, that's frightening to see a 265 pounder catch that football. It's, that's like doing some of your own blocking when you're that big. It's like a middleweight taking on a fully grown heavyweight. His performance has not dropped off either. Uh, one of the things he usually carries extra weight late in the year, but Forrest Gregg, uh, of course, finds his players for being overweight. In fact, one of his players, Gary Burley, is paying $450 a day for carrying about 18 extra pounds. Third down, six. Ball at the 39 of the Eagles. Good protection. Now he's in trouble. Wide open, Johnson. 40, 35. And the big fullback at the 30. 25, 20, and finally out of it. Let's see if we can pick it up. Anderson doing a masterful job here. Gets one fake and starts to pull out of there. Ken Clark, number 71, is holding him into the inside. Anderson gets away from him, cuts back inside, and flips a little pass right across. Now watch, watch this work as, as Pete Johnson will come all the way across the field. Now let's see if we can see number 85, Isaac Curtis, coming in from the backside. Where are you, Isaac? Well, it'll, 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 look at the right side of your screen. There it is. There's the man he hit right there. Number 27, uh, Ronell Smith was the man. No, 27, who was number 27? Richard Blackmore. Richard Blackmore. The, yeah, he's the fifth defensive back. He was the guy that got hit from behind. Here it is again. Boy, what a little dart that Anderson threw. Wasn't that a oh, pretty yeah, little pretty shot? Here's a chance for you to see it right there at the back. Quickly, Blackmore being knocked down from behind. And, of course, they'll mark it off. Back third to the down third. At about three. Actually, they gained two yards with a penalty and pass completion. Third down. That's a first down to the 29 yard line as a drill to Steve Kreider. <laughs> One thing about Anderson, he really doesn't seem to have any favorites. He looks the field over, he sees an open man, doesn't check to see what number he's wearing, nope. he feeds it to him. He just pulls the trigger. He just pulls it. Here at Veterans Stadium, a sellout of 71,000, and a lot of folks elected not to come, and even those who had purchased a ticket. And uh, you just wonder around the National Football League how many empty spots there are. 14 9, Dallas has regained the lead in the third quarter. Robert Newhouse on a three yard run. Charles Alexander. Good second effort, gets a couple of yards to about the 26-yard line. Shar and Logan up from the secondary to make the hit. 
Charles the Great from LSU. He and Bo Harris have worn those Tiger stripes through college and now through Pro Bowl. Number 56, Jerry Robinson blitzing to the inside. Locks up on the inside with Mike Wilson. Number 77 fills that hole rather nicely. But Alexander still able to find room to, to get a couple of yards there. NBC is going to be featuring those LSU Tigers on Orange Bowl Day, Orange Bowl night, January 1st. Congratulations to their fine year. Reverse. Reverse. Isaac Curtis, 25-20. And the veteran from San Diego State still showing his blazing speed. Still has those great moves and that great speed. And, of course, it's been so complimented by these young receivers. Jerry Robinson will show you his speed here as he literally almost runs down Isaac Curtis from behind. Robinson able to give you that 4-6 in the 40, which is most unusual for a linebacker. Isaac Curtis and Herman Edwards, as you see, at Green Bay leading Minnesota 19-7, were both at the University of California and transferred to San Diego State. Curtis a couple of years ahead of the cornerback of the Eagles, Edwards. That must have been a wild Cal-Stanford game yesterday. <laughs> oh, well, the play. Mike Adamley showed that great play to end the game. Not so great if you're a Stanford fan. I guess the California lateral play initiated by Joe Cap. It took a great move around the bassoon section to, to win it for the Bears. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KYW TV3 in Philadelphia. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson, Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. A game that has featured the domination of the Cincinnati Bengals offense. Forrest Gregg's club leading Dick Vermeil's Eagles. 11 to nothing. We're six minutes remaining in the third quarter. And the Bengals driving for more. Have it at the Philadelphia 19-yard line. On second down and nine. Charles Alexander to about the 16-yard line. Of course, one of the advantages of having big Pete Johnson in that backfield is that an extra 265-pound blocker is almost like putting an extra lineman in there. In that case, he was driving up in front of Charles Alexander. Alexander, good speed, good quickness. There, that's a, an excellent tandem in the backfield. Well, he's a good blocker too, Merlin, at 6'1 and 221. You bet. You bet. Big backs. And of course, that's one of the reasons that uh, the Bengals have been so successful today. They have been able to pick up those first downs and a lot of those short yardage situations. Anderson looking to the end zone now, then dumps it off to Johnson. 20, 15, 10, 5. He's out of bounds at the two-yard line. Pete Johnson and just defying those defensive backs once he gets into the open. First and goal, Cincinnati. Jerry Robinson finally able to track down Johnson. Again, this is the kind of thing that the Bengals do so well. Anderson looking downfield knows that Johnson is open. He can read that from the positioning of the defenders downfield. Just flicks the ball out to him. That's like a long handoff. That's like handing the ball off to Johnson in the backfield. But he's wide open into the secondary. We should say for Pete Johnson, who was not known for his great hands out of college, that was a tough catch he made. Excellent the ball catch. was behind him. And he's, low. Be he's become a fine receiver. First and goal. Alexander. Ooh, good play. Good defensive play. Led by Reggie Wilkes from on top, and underneath was 99 Leonard Mitchell, the number one draft pick of the Eagles out of the University of Houston a year ago. And Wilkes from Georgia Tech. He is a second cousin of Jamal Wilkes, the brilliant forward of the Los Angeles Lakers and former UCLA All-American. Wants to go to medical school. In fact, uh, he's very eager to... Uh, to have a chance to almost signed up for medical school when the strike started to drag on, but they got him back just in time. From the two, second down. Anderson over the middle, touchdown, and Dan Ross didn't drop that one. Ross, who let one get away in the first quarter, said thanks for the chance to make amends, and the Bengals run their lead to 17 to nothing. chance to watch it again Anderson reading the pattern well and zips this one notice how he puts it close to the ground Ross taking it as he rolled into the end zone good pass good play his second touchdown this year Ross had five last year of course set a Super Bowl record remember he caught 11 balls in the Super Bowl game against San Francisco breaches try after
He hooks it, but it's still good. He got it inside the upright. Eagles, they might as well not be playing today the way things are going. Breaches kick, goes out of bounds. And we understand that a new record may have been set here in Philadelphia. Veteran Philadelphia writers are saying that today's pre-halftime booing was the loudest they've ever heard in Philadelphia. That may indeed be a record. Guard advantage here. Let's see if they can do something with it. High and short. Henry at the 14. Ooh. He gets to the 31-yard line. Good coverage by the Bengals. Whistle, a break in the action. Four minutes, 12 seconds left. Three for something. First down at the 31. Inside handoff and a good play to Harrington. And he's out to the 39 in a sizable gain on first down. Brian Hicks made the tackle. As we look ahead now with the whole restructuring, there are no divisions anymore, just the two conferences. And this is how it'll line up on NBC when we get into January. The last weekend's play January 2nd after New Year's in the first round. The top eight teams in the American Conference and National Conference will play it off. First best record against the eighth best in each conference. We, of course, will have four games for you that first weekend, then the second round, third round, and the Super Bowl is scheduled in Pasadena on January 30th. You get your feeling about the restructuring, Merlin. First down and more for Montgomery. He's out to the 45-yard line. I, I, my one opinion is that the National Football League did a tremendous job in salvaging what's left of this year to take just a nine-game season and make it really seem, to me, it's going to be interesting. And I think it's going to be meaningful. And the other thing it will do for the first time, uh, it will allow us to pick the best football team at the end of the year. Now, normally you qualified with the best record, which means a lot of the teams that have the best record sometimes are slumping by the time the season ends. This year, it's a test of the best teams at the end of the year. And the team that comes through there will be playing the best football at that time in the season. It really will be a tournament. And there's another Eagle first down as John Spagnola, the tight end from Yale University, is into Cincinnati territory with a ball at the 43. Jim LeClaire, the tackler. One other change, and that is that that the final playoffs before the Super Bowl will be at a neutral site. And of course, uh, one of the reasons for that, I think, uh, a game that was played last year with the Cincinnati Bengals, a game we did uh, when the San Diego Chargers uh, played on a day when the chill factor hit a minus 59. And let's hope we don't ever have to do one of those again, Dick. Yeah, but I hate to see it taken away from the hometown teams. I, I, I'm not sure I like the neutral site. 43-yard line, first down, Jaworski trying to get the Eagles' offense in gear. There's a kick, Gleason, and a fumble, and the Eagles recover Jerry Sizemore. The tackle following the play downfield has it at the 32-yard line as the big wide receiver Harold Carmichael was popped hard and Sizemore opportunistically there to pick up the fumble. Let's get a look at this. Uh, Good job by Jaworski of spotting Carmichael open. Looks first to the left and then zips the ball. Ball coughed as he was hit. And the ball rolled away. Dwight Hicks had his hands on it momentarily. Sizemore doing a good job of getting there ahead of the Bengals to preserve the Eagles drive. And a first down. It was Cameron who made the hit on Carmichael to force the fumble. From the 32. Perry Harrington wrapped up by Wilson Whitley. He's played a strong game in the middle. Whitley got the message from Forrest Gregg when the Bengals, despite their great year, went into the draft and their first two picks were defensive linemen. They felt that Whitley wasn't playing up to his potential. He had only two sacks last year, former Lombardi Trophy Award winner. He's played a big game today. Ball at the 30, second down and eight, Philadelphia. Eagles trailing in the final minute of the third quarter. They're down 18 to nothing. Screen to Carmichael. And the big man is to the 17 and a first down. How marvelously fickle fans are. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> their team is finally giving them something to cheer about. Big Harold Carmichael making the most of that opportunity to touch that football as he picked up about 15 yards on his own. Five seconds left, and perhaps that's the last play of the quarter. Hey, Jaworski. He had Montgomery open, but over 
Davis shot him, and Jaworski very unhappy with himself. Well, that's one that we can attribute to timing. Normally, Jaworski would have released that ball sooner. I think he sensed that he was late with that football, and he put a little extra on it. Well, what happened is the ball took off. Just simply went too high. And amazingly, the statistics through three quarters, the Bengals only a few more yards than the Eagles overall, and yet they lead 18-0. In case you're curious, Cincinnati last had a shutout in 76. Philadelphia has not been shut out since 77. The Rams did it 20 to nothing. Montgomery. Oh. And again, a timing play, and Montgomery had the half step, but the ball was a half step long. Trying to take advantage of that 4-5 speed as he ran him up the sideline. Montgomery not able to reach the football. Jaworski's going to have another chance. He's got third and ten. And tough, tough place. He'll he'll need all the expertise of Sid Gilman up here. And he's going to see a different Cincinnati defensive alignment as you look at Carl Harrison. Claude Humphrey said, I've never seen a man in this game hustle more than Carl Harrison. That's the ultimate compliment, one athlete to another. Especially from a pro like Claude Humphrey although Harrison did not have the year last year that he'd had the year prior Vermeil was a little unhappy about that did not have a bad year but was not up to the quality of, of his, the football that he would played earlier third and ten for Jaworski out of the shotgun facing six defensive backs he finds an open man Billy Campfield inside the ten but not enough for the first down it's going to be fourth and a couple, maybe just a yard, and Camfield shaken up on the play. That's Camfield. the remember the Eagles were stopped on fourth and less than a yard on their own 44 earlier. This time it's Montgomery. He's got it. Well, you got a crucial fourth down situation. You give the ball to your best football player, number 31, Wilbert Montgomery. And he didn't disappoint him. He not only got the yard, he got a little extra. Going outside to try and get away from that aggressive drive by the Bengal defense. Montgomery has to cut back inside to pick up that yardage. But look at him fight for the extra, extra yard there. Kemp bounces off Bobby Kemp and dives over to the five. Well, what a player Montgomery's been. Last four years, he's gained 4,900 yards. First and goal. Outside the five. Jamona is in for Montgomery, giving him a breather. This is Louis Jamona. Ooh. Wilson Whitley again invading the Eagle backfield to make the loss behind the line of scrimmage of uh, Louis Jamona. Gets one shot and loses two. And I think they've got to go to the air. Where else would the loss be but behind the line of scrimmage? <laughs> 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 well, you could lose money. That's, you know, that's <laughs> I suppose. Yes. In fact, a lot of these players did. And, and not being here for seven weeks, they lost you, a lot of money. And you can lose respect. Second and goal on the seventh. The Eagles. Jaworski. Carmichael. Whoa. Stopped at the two-yard line. Lewis Breeden. Ken Riley, both there to topple the big three Carmichael, who is six feet eight inches tall. Montgomery apparently still shaken up, stays on the sidelines. He really took a hit, but let's watch Mon let's watch uh, Carmichael as he stretches downfield here. Big number 17. What a huge target he is. Cradles that football, but he just takes a Lewis Breeden, 34, just blows his legs right out from underneath him. Third down, a little less than. Three yards to go. Eagles trailing 18 to nothing, trying to get on the board early in the fourth quarter. Jaworski. Going to run it. And doesn't make it as Bobby Kemp, the second year safety, makes a great open field tackle. And the fans, everyone saw an open man. They're all telling the fella or woman next to him, didn't you see the guy wide open? Yeah, they didn't have those big guys chasing them down either. Jaworski taking all the time he could. Could not find an open receiver. Did a good job of avoiding Eddie Edwards, number 73. Sizemore trying to hold him off. 
Jaworski still hoping, I think, to get a receiver at that point. Unable to do it. He's down at the four. It's fourth and goal. We'll see what the Eagles do. 14 plays in the drive, and now fourth and goal at the four. Jaworski has his receiver offense in. Flag is down, and so is Campfield as Reggie Williams made the defensive play. And how this man is matured at linebacker for the Cincinnati Bengals. Third round pick out of Dartmouth, Williams. A banner season last year and all over the field this year. And the penalty goes against Cincinnati for offside. What a break for the Eagles. It does not. Harrington starting to the outside. Cutting in behind the block of Steve Kenny, number 73, accelerating into the end zone. Another look as you see the surge of that Cincinnati Bengal defense. Able to avoid it to the outside. Follow Louis Jamona, number 33, into the end zone. Try for point by Franklin mm -hmm. is good. We'll talk about him in a moment. Rodney Tate and David Verser deep. It is Verser at the Bengal eight. 20. And to the 27 yard line. Al Chesley made the tackle number 59. Pastorini, uh, I teased him yesterday. I said, uh, I hope you're making a collection of all these uniforms. Of course, he's moved from Houston to Oakland uh, to Los Angeles and now here to Philadelphia. He said, Yeah, he said, I'm going to open my own museum. <laughs> Good <laughs> sense could, of humor. He could put more than uniforms in there, could be. And we have 163 no shows. Vito Cav, the rookie from Penn State, a little ice on his leg. Ken Anderson, complete to Collinsworth, and the lanky receiver is out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Reggie Wilkes made the play, and Collinsworth has his fourth catch of the day. Collinsworth limping as he comes back onto the field. I would imagine that they'll pull him off to the sideline. Of course, this is a dangerous time in this game. Dick. Uh, players obviously will be feeling more fatigue than is normal, and that's the time when you get hurt. You get a little sloppy. You don't protect yourself as well. Be very careful during the final quarters of a game uh, like this. Collinsworth picked up just the 10 yards for the first down from the 37. 10:48 left in the game. Bengals lead 18 to 7. And Anderson staying in the air. Complete to Steve Kreider at the 48-yard line. Appears to be close to another first down. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Philadelphia Eagles and the National Football League is prohibited. Dick, one of the things that you would expect, and I'm sure that Jaworski would love to, to have had a chance to have a little more activity today than he had at least a few more trips into the end zone but you'd expect uh, the Bengals to be running the ball more but they're so confident in their passing game that they're never afraid to throw the football first down from the 48 Pete Johnson will run it this time and he's to the Philadelphia 44 yard line a solid pickup of eight yards and first down for the rumbling giant Johnson oh he's moved that 260 pounds around well he certainly has and he has not shown any after effects from carrying that extra poundage. You know, you talk about, you know, fighters who are amateurs and they have 100, 150 fights and you see their pro record maybe is 10 and 4. You forget about those amateur fights. I want to tell you a little story about Pete Johnson after this play, how much football he has been involved with, high caliber level. Johnson again on cue. He has the first down at the 40. Johnson not only played at Ohio State as you'll see the blocking form in front of him but he was so big so soon 180 pounds in the seventh grade that his name Willie James Hemmick and he changed it to Pete Johnson so that he could play seven years of high school varsity <laughs> ball in New York he was playing high school ball when he was still in the seventh grade using two names Willie James Hemmick now Pete Johnson and then on to Ohio State. Like they're massaging the leg of Billy Campfield. 
in the uh, plantaris area of that calf. An easy muscle to, to strain. Johnson again. He has another seven yards on that little flare. Bunting and Wilkes made the tackle. Let's run down all the scores for you. Pittsburgh and Houston. The Oilers, surprisingly, with a tie in the fourth quarter. Dallas, a five-point lead against Tampa Bay in the last quarter. That's now 7-0. Cleveland has scored in the fourth quarter over New England. 37-0. The Jets with an easy win against Baltimore, apparently, in the fourth. Miami now has a two-point lead. Three field goals for the Dolphin fourth quarter. Both those teams unbeaten. Atlanta, after trailing 14-0, now leads 27-17. The Bears have a three-point lead against the Lions in the third quarter. The rest of the scores after this play. It's second and three. Johnson, they're really working the big guy, and not this time. He accepts a loss. Reggie Wilkes, 51, the linebacker, made the big play for the Eagles. Maybe Forrest, maybe Forrest is going to play him into shape. <laughs> <laughs> Green Bay leads Minnesota 26 to 7 in the fourth quarter. And we'll have some late scores. And, of course, NFL 82 there. New Orleans has a touchdown lead against the Kansas City Chiefs in the fourth quarter. So stay tuned. NFL 82 have all the results for you before we leave the air. Crucial third down here for the Eagle defense. They need to get that football back for Ron Jaworski and the offense. 722. Still plenty of time to go in this football game. But they can't allow the Bengals to keep holding the football. Nor a touchdown. A field goal would at least keep them within two touchdowns. Anderson is low, and it was a trap. Ross thought he had it, but it came in on one hop. He was well covered. Good Ross, try by Ross. Ross doing a good job of acting there. He knew that ball bounced, but figured he'd be positive about it anyway. No argument from the Bengals, and with a ball spotted at the 36, that would be about a 53-yard field goal, and that's out of the range of Breach. So Anderson with the lead, 18-7. to Well, they don't figure they're going to gain that much with a punt. They're just going to go for it here or at least would appear to be going for it. That's an interesting call. So the Eagles with 7-10 left, hoping to stop Cincinnati, fourth and six. Collinsworth is back in the game. Anderson, did Ross catch that ball? Oh, my, he was stumbling, going down and reached up and meat hooked it. I'm not sure I believe he even caught that football. <laughs> What an amazing catch. A chance to look at Dan Ross, number 89. Now watch him as he breaks to the outside here. He appeared to stumble a little bit, and I think that's the turf again. Almost on the ground, reaches back with that right hand and hooks it one-handed behind him. Oh, oh wow. Circus <laughs> catch by Dan Ross. Wow. Is he at midseason form or Boy, late I'll season? Tell you, another angle. You'll see it there. He caught it with one arm behind him as he was going to the ground. Big play. And a first down at the 25-yard line. Dan Ross. Reverse. Alexander. Not much there to the 24-yard line. They didn't fool Reggie Wilkes, who makes another solid play. Dan Ross now six catches, 56 yards, and that's one to put in your scrapbook. Falling down, actually being pinned down by a defensive player and still reaching back behind you with one hand to make the play while you're on the turf. And of course, controlling the clock, 555, 554, and ticking down. You know, the Eagles not able to put any points on the board when they don't have the football. And of course, that's the objective for the Bengals here. Control the football, control the clock. And Merlin, look at the exodus. Have you seen so many fans leave so early? The game really is fairly close. Incomplete intended for Isaac Curtis. Frank Lamaster on the coverage, number 55, the Eagles linebacker. Half the crowd going home. Well, I think they're disappointed in their Eagles today, Dick, and I, they're all so angry. They're still angry about the strike, and I think they want to let people, I, I think they want to let the players and coaches feel that a little bit, too. And the losing teams are going to feel that anger in this first week much more than oh, the yes. winning teams. Oh, yes. yes. I think important to come back uh, and, and put a win on the board, and if you're going to lose, lose on the road. <laughs> I put it that way. Get the fans on your side with That's the victory. That's right. Absolutely. Third down and eight. The Eagles still they can stop. The Bengals will have a chance. There it is. Intercepted. That's Jerry Robinson. And he had the speed but couldn't quite get into a full gallop. Philadelphia's ball at the 37-yard line. And the play was made as Anderson. 
Anderson was hit by Gregory Brown. Brown forced that flip-flop pass into the arms of Robinson. Brown has a an extra rusher last year, bagged seven and a half sacks. You'll see him coming from the backside here. Number 98 right there reaches across and hooks Anderson's arm just as he throws the football. The Eagles have an opportunity. Leaving and others seem disinterested. Jaworski from his 37. He's 15 for 29 today. One interception. And a flag. Early movement. Apparently against the Eagles. False start. Looked like Ron Baker. 63 lifted up just before the snap and of course you can't move that hand and that's something that's you know you're eager to get going watch the right guard number 63 there just lifting up out of his stance and of course you can't do that but mark it off first down so first down and 15 back at the 32 yard line in case you join us late Cincinnati Took a 3-0 lead in the first quarter on a 19-yard field goal by Breach. Then they got a safety as Reggie Williams sacked Jaworski in the end zone. A Breach 38-yard field goal and another of 49 made it 11-0 at the half. Anderson to Ross, a two-yard pass, 18-0 after three quarters. And Harrington's two-yard run, the only Eagle touchdown here in the fourth quarter. It's 18-7. Harrington getting out of bounds. And that's an alert play with time down to the five-minute mark. The Eagles have to get the ball back again, even if they score in this possession. So save every second you can. That's critical. Jaworski, good at working the clock, very adept at working the clock in the closing stages of a game, needs to get this first down. And, of course, starting first and 15 and now second 15, or almost 15, a real disadvantage for him. You see him taking the signal from the sideline. Consultation between Sid Gilman and... Dick Vermeil, play goes in from the sideline. Jaworski then relaying it uh -oh. into the huddle. Uh -oh. I certainly did. Jaworski on second down and 15. Trailing 18 to 7. Five minutes left. Good catch and then a fumble and recovered by the Eagles as Ron Smith fumbled and alertly downfield. The recovery made by Mike Quick, the North Carolina State rookie, the number one draft pick. Now the Eagles, fourth quarter, New England has tied the Browns in Cleveland at seven. I'm sure that this is four down territory and time in the game for Dick Vermeil, so he may want to go for a piece of this and then go for two, two shots at picking up that 10 yards. Jaworski back in the shotgun. Let's see what they do. Clock running, 437, 436 left. by Lewis Breeden and he fumbles and the Eagles recover at the 39 yard line. Breeden made the interception and then the Eagles recover the fumble so it'll be first down Philadelphia. It is a first. Wow what, a, what an interesting way to pick up a first down. Dick. <laughs> Breeden's first interception of the year. Watch the change of beautiful steal by Breeden as he strips it out of Carmichael's hands and then Breeden trying to keep his balance lost the football alertly jumped on right there and they pick up the first down true to his uh, name Mike was quick in seeing that loose ball number 81 and it's a first down Philadelphia on change of possession at the 39 the clock 424 left It was Smith uh, who recovered the fumble earlier also. Number 81, Smith did recover the fumble. He gets the reception, hurries to the huddle. It was quick to recover Smith's fumble just before that. That's, that's what we did, Dick. <laughs> We've been obviously on a hiatus as well. Down to the four-minute mark. 48-yard line, first down. The Eagles trailing 18-0 coming into this fourth quarter. Have a touchdown, trying to get within a score. Quite a rally. Carmichael, first down at the 34 of Cincinnati. 338, 337 left. Need to get it into the E2 in his great career here in Philadelphia. Clock continues to run, now down to 310. Spagnola popped at the 28 yard line by Reggie Williams. Remember, the Eagles had to use. 
use one of their timeouts. They'll have a help from the two-minute warning. Hank Buller, the defensive coordinator for the Bengals, obviously stacking his people deep, forcing the Eagles to throw short, and then getting a tackle quickly. They won't let them have the big yardage. They want to make them work it down the field, and they're trying to beat them with the clock. And the fans booing because it's taking the Eagles so long to run the next play. Of course, the layoff, they don't have that two or three plays at a time in the huddle. Jaworski. Ooh, deflected. Downfield incomplete. Intended for John Spagnola. Final score in. The New York Jets blasting Baltimore 37 to nothing. They scored often and early and rolled on to victory. So the Jets are now 2 and 1, Baltimore 0 and 3. All the scores, NFL report to follow. And now on third down and two, Jaworski with time running out on Philadelphia, trailing 18 to 7 to Cincinnati. down clock is running 214 213 the Eagles have a chance to get away and play before the two minute warning if they can line up now time will be called by the official as We've one of the Bengals player. Louis Breeden is slow getting up Louis Breeden who was involved in the tackle on Spagnola out of your picture to the right it's a triple left formation Smith Carmichael and Spagnola to the left Going for six. Just tipped out of the reach of Carmichael by Ray Griffin, number 44, and Ken Riley. And the Rams have fought back to tie Houston with a minute and a half left as Frank Corral kicks off to Willie Tellis at the five. Tellis starts left and stays left. He picks up some blockers and rolls to midfield. With Carter Hartwig fighting Leroy Irvin all the way down the sideline, Tellus goes into the end zone for a 27-20 Oiler victory. Out of the shotgun Jaworski, whose passing statistics have improved here in the second half. Screen, and Jamona can't find the handle, and he had a couple of blockers in front. Our thanks to the men in the truck, the coordinating producer of football, Ted Nathanson. Telecast of today's game has been produced by George Finkel, directed by Harry Coyle, technical director Bill Toby, associate director John Libretto. Our thanks to the men in the booth, Jim Gallagher, Mike McKay, Jerry Bruderly, Jerry Quinlan for their help. Record at 2 and 1, Los Angeles is 0 and 3. Almost intercepted as. Overshooting Ron Smith was Jaworski. Ron Smith stretching for that one as he came across the middle, but unable to get his fingers on it. Invitation. Reflecting on the game, I'm sure they're very happy they avoided a shutout. They, and they have threatened here late. Open is Smith again. And he's down at the 15. That won't be enough for a first down. It'll be fourth down and five, and the Eagles will hurry to the line of scrimmage as the clock is running, nearing the one-and-a-half-minute mark. They want to make a mistake here, though. You, you only got one down if you don't get the first down. Jaworski calling out the audible. They need five for the first down, but more importantly, a touchdown. There's, There's the, first the first down. Jamona can't get out of bounds, and the clock continues to run. Ball at the seven-yard line. First and goal for the Eagles. First and goal. Screen to Jamona. Has blockers. He doesn't get in. He stopped at the one-yard line in the final minute. Down to 51 seconds, still ticking. And uh, Jaworski throws that one just to stop the clock. So it'll be second, third now, third and goal, just inside the one-yard line. Another final is in the Cowboys. Boy, they were stretched by Tampa Bay, and Dallas prevails 14 to 9 in a tough defensive battle. So the Buccaneers are now 0-3. 
And the Cowboys 2 and 1. So it'll be Dallas 2 and 1, Cleveland 2 and 1 on Thursday, 3:30 Eastern time for NFL 82 here on NBC. Louis Giamona, nephew of Dick Vermeil, Utah Stater. Good choice on a school by Giamona, as well as some fine effort here. Dives in from about the five. He just plants a foot, and it, it looked again like he caught his toe on that turf. New turf, which is good for the players here, because the old turf here was like concrete. But the, the stickiness of that turf has, has shown up on several plays today, including that one. Back to Jamona and the uh, relationship with Dick Vermeil. Dick's sister's son is Jamona, and Louie, he's named after Dick Vermeil's dad. Of course, Dick's brother uh, also uh, a fine football player at Utah State, Al Vermeil. Third and goal at the one. 18 to 7, Cincinnati. The in. No signal yet. No, they're marking it on the inch line, and the clock continues to wow. run. And it's fourth and goal. Now it's not only the clock, but the down situation that the Eagles. Down inside, 30 seconds. And fourth down. Oops. Offside. Appeared to charge offside, but may have been drawn. And LeClaire didn't like the way he was handled by Jaworski. LeClaire has about 30 pounds on the Eagle quarterback. Like a war in there on that play. LeClaire, LeClaire wanting to duke it out with Jaworski. And of course, Jaworski getting that kind of support from Spagnola for the rest of his troops. That's one of the things you do. You protect your quarterback at all costs. Here, the Jaworski was trying to say they are offside, and LeClaire kept coming, gave him a little bump, and uh, Ron Jaworski didn't go for that. He stood his ground. How wise that was. I think we've got a first down, huh? No, fourth, fourth down. down. Okay. Now that's one of the penalties, uh, one of the short ones in the game. That was about a one-inch penalty. The ball was already tickling the goal line, and it's half the distance on the penalty. I wonder how they could get a first down on that. I think they probably would have called offsetting 15 yarders, but not going to change them down here. Look at that ball. Nosed up. Uh-oh, Jaworski has to move Spagnola. That's a bad sign. second touchdown in this fourth quarter to cut Cincinnati's lead to 18 13 with 22 seconds left Giamona coming to his right side and outside but just barely making it into the end zone here he's hit outside and dives across just just drops that football on the other side of the line and of course the big the big factor now Dick is the clock down to 22 seconds and even if you can get an onside kick not much time to work with it. And it takes a touchdown for the Eagles to win. As that makes it eight for Franklin. Gives him great control over the football. Now talk to him. Has to go 10 yards. There it is. And does. And goes out of bounds. And so the Bengals will, if it was touched. I think it was touched. It appeared it was touched by one of the Bengal players. Then the ball would be to Cincinnati where it went out of bounds. If it wasn't touched, then they'll kick it over with a five-yard penalty. There is a large discussion going on down there right at the moment. Jerry Mark Bright trying to find out just exactly what happened. That's yes, what happened. it was touched. Touched the Bengal. And it's uh, Cincinnati's ball. No different than if the ball had been kicked deep down the five-yard line. The kick was left touched by the receiving team. First down, Cincinnati. So that does it for Philadelphia. The Bengals can only be stopped once by a timeout. That's all Philadelphia has left. And with 22 seconds remaining, a play, maybe two, and that'll be it. Losing today, score really not reflective of Cincinnati's play. They are going to win it 18 to 14. Clock running. Final score, Miami gets a field goal in the fourth quarter to win at Buffalo 9 to 7 so the Dolphins are 3 and 0 oh. Buffalo drops to 2 and 1 and here final score at Veterans Stadium and very few of uh, the some 60,000 left to see the last play as a
Cincinnati Bengals build up an early 18 to nothing lead and then Forrest Gregg's club holds on despite two fourth quarter touchdowns by Philadelphia an 18-14 Cincinnati win. What a pair that uh, certainly do.